News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A dramatic appeal against human trafficking. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. It's a balmy 41 degrees in Missoula right now. How about that? Yes, it's cloudy. It's 41. And our newscast this morning, sponsored by Dig It Excavating, bringing 30 years of excellence to every job. Visit digitmontana.com or call 214-4292. Yesterday, Montana lawmakers heard a bill that aims to end human trafficking in the state. House Bill 89 would set aside funding for public education and to provide aid for victims. It also ensures victims are not charged with prostitution and that those who utilize sex trafficking must register as sex offenders. Two victims came forward yesterday in support of that bill. I'm a victim and a survivor. Please pass HB 89. Attorney General Tim Fox says it's a huge, largely unseen problem. He's been pushing for more state legislation concerning sex trafficking for years and asked Representative Kimberly Dudick of Missoula to carry that bill. What if I asked you what do Missoula and Kalispell have in common with Baltimore and Dallas? Sadly, the answer is that children in each of these cities have been preyed upon by adults who see them only as commodities. A rally after the hearing brought supporters from around the state to promote the bill, as well as get out the message of the national hotline. That number is 1-888-373-7888. No immediate action was taken. Six law enforcement officers are on paid administrative leave after a man being sought by authorities was shot and killed outside a hospital in Billings. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John says 48-year-old John Barry Marshall of Billings was wanted by the U.S. Marshals Violent Offender Task Force on burglary warrants. Officers got a tip. He was at the Billings Clinic Friday. Police say when he was approached by uniformed officers, he rammed, tripped, and a shot was fired into a hospital window. Officers don't know if Marshall intentionally fired the shot. St. John says a third officer approached Marshall, who was on the ground, and saw he was trying to dislodge a jammed round. Three Billings police officers, two deputy U.S. Marshals, and a Yellowstone County Sheriff's deputy fired multiple shots. All are on leave. A 36-year-old man from Plains died in a fiery one-vehicle crash on a gravel road in Sanders County. The Highway Patrol tells KECI Television that the man was westbound on River Road between Plains and Thompson Falls early Friday when he began to slide as he rounded a curve. The car hit a tree and caught fire. The man died at the scene. No names have been released. PPL Montana will officially mothball its coal-fired J.E. Corette plant in Billings no later than April 15. Spokesman David Hoffman told me the new EPA regulations set to go into effect force the shutdown of the 154-megawatt plant. It doesn't have a wet scrubber system like Coal Strip does, for example. And with new EPA regs, it would require the installation of some pretty pricey pollution control equipment that would cost in the range of $40 million. Hoffman says the company has had time to provide assistance to the workers that will be displaced by the plant's shutdown. About 35 jobs will be gone. We announced this mothball in, in September of 2012. So we have had time to relocate employees, provide them with early retirement packages. Hoffman says the greatest impact, though, will be to all the businesses that provided support and products to the plant, as well as the overall tax base at the city of Billings. He said April 15th is the official date that new EPA regulations would go into effect, as well as, of course, being tax day. Superintendent of Public Instruction Denise Juno is asking lawmakers to support state-sponsored preschool and initiatives that build on efforts to increase graduation rates. Juno spoke to a joint session of the Montana House and Senate Monday. The Democrat is in her second term. She says more students are staying in school. The graduation rate is at an all-time high of 85 percent, and the dropout rates have decreased as part of an initiative called Graduation Matters. Graduation, uh, pardon me, uh, Juno asked lawmakers to increase the compulsory attendance age from 16 to 18 years of age. A Missoula woman was arrested by police after allegedly attempting to steal a car. Public Information Officer Travis Welsh says the call came into 911 just before 10 o'clock on Sunday night. They had gone out to start their car in the driveway to war- or let it warm up, and at one point the owner's daughter heard the engine revving. And uh, they went out to find a strange woman sitting in the car and apparently attempting to drive it away. Wells describes what happened when the homeowner attempted to confront the woman. When the woman in the car saw them, she got out and walked away. And she was located a short distance from the home and was placed. 
under arrest. Welsh identified the suspect as 25-year-old Janelle Little Coyote. She was taken to the Missoula County Jail and will make an appearance in Justice Court. She's charged with felony theft. A 40,000 bushel grain bin split open in northwestern Montana, spilling about half of its contents onto the ground. Jeff Van Pivenage, a senior vice president and general manager for Columbia Grain's Montana division, says the bin split open during the night Saturday. He tells the Billings Gazette that no one was at the Gavilon Grain Facility at Wolf Point, but the nearly full bin broke. No injuries reported. The cause of the failure has not yet been determined. He did not have an estimate on how much it would cost to repair or replace that grain bin. Every year for the past five years, the Montana Department of Labor and Industry has hosted a safety fest in Missoula, Missoula's not in the lineup for a safety fest this year, though. However, coordinator Casey Kyler West says Missoula companies are welcome to take part in some of the free classes that will be taking place this year in Lewistown. General industry, work comp 101, violence in the workplace, cyber safety. Those are just some of the classes. We've got more than 30 classes being offered at the Lewistown Safety Fest, and some of them are all day, some of them are only a couple of hours. But Safety Fest is designed so that employers can send their staff at no charge, so it helps kind of reduce the training fees for employers. Kyla West says Safety Fest is a smart way for many businesses to be safer and save money in the process. These are also offered in the private sector, and they can cost between $100, $150, just depending on, on who's teaching the class. Really, there is a cost savings for employers to send their staff or to attend themselves, especially if it's just a one- or a two-man operation. This can, this can really uh, save those businesses money, and then they can, re- in turn, reinvest The next Safety Fest is in early March in Lewiston, Lewistown, followed by events at Butte and Billings. Kyler West says the last Safety Fest was held in Kalispell and held over 450 people attending. Finally, know your customer. That guidance might have helped a Butte man who was arrested over the weekend after reportedly offering to sell marijuana to an off-duty police officer. Butte Silver Bow Sheriff Ed Lester says 32-year-old Leroy Hopke approached the officer and his wife as they left his store Friday night. The officer declined the sale and called on-duty police officers from his vehicle. Lester said Hopke was undone by, quote, an unfortunate marketing situation. News Talk Time now, 610. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy skies today with a few scattered showers. Temperatures will warm into the mid-40s. Tonight, rain likely early, then it will mix with snowfall. Mostly cloudy with our lows dropping into the 20s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.